Okay, hello and welcome to my crash course in GMAT Quant. Uh, this very first video is going to be the absolute fundamentals. So in order to make sure it's not too slow, I'm just going to go through quite quickly. Um, even if you know what you're doing, it's I'm going to try and make it worth watching this video uh, because if there's redundant knowledge that you already know, then uh, that just means you can sort of uh, move on past this video without going el out elsewhere and doing anything else. Whereas if there's parts in this video that you're not too comfortable with, uh, because these are the fundamentals and there's ubiquitous materials elsewhere online for them, I'm not going to painstakingly go through them here. I'm just going to sort of mention what you definitely need to know and sort of my thoughts on time saving in the GMAT with uh, the fundamentals of arith arithmetic. So let's just quickly get started. Um, so the first rule that is maybe debatable, but something that I find is extremely helpful is just always work with fractions rather than decimals or percentages. And the reason for that is it just tends to save a lot of time. Uh, for example, in tree diagrams, you may find out that 60% of people do something uh, followed by um, 50%, uh, followed by, you know, 25%. And if you need to multiply that all out, uh, I mean, it's it's already going to be a bit tricky. Whereas if we'd written this in terms of uh, fractions from the beginning, then we can see that this is 3 over 5, uh, 1 over 2, and 1 over 4. And multiplying that out, well, then we can immediately just see it's 3 over 40. And so it's just much faster. In the same way, I would say that, um, for example, this allows, us, allows you to avoid some nasty uh, arithmetic. For example, if the GMAT asks you to calculate 0.6 um, cubed over 0.4 cubed uh, times 0.35 over 0.70, uh, let's say, uh, I would just say, OK, I want to work with fractions, not decimals or percentages. So the first thing I want to do is just get rid of all these decimals. And so what I can just do is use the fact that multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing uh, it keeps everything the same. So I can just rewrite this thing as 6 over 4 cubed times uh, 35 over 70. And now that's a lot easier to spot that that's just going to be 3 over 2 cubed times 1 over 2, which now is much more easily manageable as 27 over 16. So that's just the first thing. And you, you may actually find that this ends up saving you a lot of time. Uh, you can always avoid doing nasty stuff with decimals. Um, and in fact, I've never had to do any uh, sort of long division or anything like that using during the GMAT, just because you can always use this trick no matter what they give you. For example, if you find yourself needing to do uh, six, uh, I, I don't know, 0 0.06 over um, uh, seven, then I would just think of that as uh, multiplying the top and bottom by uh, 100, and you get to six over 700, which will, assuming you're sort of using it later on, uh, that will be much nicer for sort of, you know, multiplication and cancelling and things like that. So that's just the first uh, first rule I tend to work with. And you'll see when we do questions why I recommend that, and you will hopefully always see me obeying that rule. So the second thing I like to say is always simplify or cancel before multiplying. Um, and this is actually much more important than it sounds. Uh, the GMAT never actually asks you for anything particularly complex. If you find yourself trying to do something like 244 times 371 and actually trying to work that out, then you've probably missed something or uh, you're doing it without it being necessary. I don't think I've ever had to actually calculate anything anywhere near as bad as that. Um, the worst sort of thing you have to maybe actually do have to calculate would be something like 23 times 42, which is, you know, slightly, maybe a bit time consuming, but not anywhere near as bad as what I wrote out before. So what I mean by this is in a lot of questions, uh, you'll have something like this. Um, you know, you, at one point you'll have to, you'll, you'll write out a, a lot of numbers that you're multiplying together. Um, but you may have something like this. Uh, Du, du, du. Mm. Okay, and so you could multiply the top and the bottom together and then try and cancel, but you're honestly going to be there for days. So just before you do any multiplica multiplication out, uh, just try and spot things you can cancel and make sure you know how to do this. So for example, 
uh, here, you can paste that five with a one, this with a three, uh, 17 with a one, and this guy with a two, uh, this three with a one, and this 18 with a six, and then all of a sudden, this is now just immediately six over, oh, uh, I can actually, I could have replaced the six and the two as well with a three and a one, and so straight away we get three over 13 as our answer, rather than having to do anything nasty there. So that's just a rule to always be on the lookout. Just make sure you cancel before you ever try and do any multiplication because uh, canceling down very large numbers is very time consuming as well as the actual multiplication being time consuming. Uh, the next thing that sort of complements this rule is uh, use estimation to your advantage. So for example, I made the claim that you never have to do anything like 324 times 571 in the GMAT. And while that, is true, you may find yourself needing to, it may look like you need to work that out. Uh, whereas what I would say is that uh, you have to use the fact that the GMAT is multiple choice to your advantage, because this, regardless of how good you are at mental math, is going to take you a while. Uh, whereas what I would just say is use the next two rules to uh, tell you what the answer is out of the five, because we can just say, well, this is about 300 times 600, which is just going to be, uh, what, 180,000, okay? And so we know we're in that sort of ballpark figure. Um, and so that will usually already give us the answer. But to be honest, even if we, even if there's two answers that are very close, uh, then we can use the next rule, which is use the final digits to your advantage. So this goes hand in hand with estimation because what we do is we say, okay, it's about 180,000, but also what's the final digit? Well, it's just, it has to be just the multiplication of the final digits of your numbers. So 324 times 571 will have a final digit of four. And so we know it's a number that's around 180,000 with a final digit of four. Now, obviously that's much quicker than actually trying to do that multiplication. And the GMAT is actually set up almost always. Um, in fact, I've never seen it otherwise such that these kind of time-saving methods will pan out. The answers will be, uh, design such that these cheats sort of help. Um, okay, so those are the quick sort of overall rules you want to be following for uh, arithmetic. And then all I would say for the rest of this video is just make sure you know that you can do all of these things. I'm not going to go through them in detail here. I'm just going to quickly mention. So adding and subtracting fractions, for example, um, this is something you have to do quite a lot. One over three plus one over four minus one over six. Uh, you need to make sure you can get very fast at knowing that what you have to do is make the denominator all the same, which is sort of searching for the lowest, um, well, I'm sure you know this, but the lowest common multiple of all of these, which we'll go through more in detail in a later video. But so in this case, it would be 12. So 12 goes on the bottom and then you just need to sort of see what each number would, would have been. So four on the top of the first one, three for the second and two for the third. And so that's going to be five over 12. So obviously, if you're not comfortable with that, make sure you go and learn it because this isn't a thorough lesson in that. In the same way, multiplying and dividing fractions, um, actually very simple. In fact, I've done it throughout this video already. You literally just multiply the things along the top and multiply the things along the bottom. Um, but just uh, make sure that you um, you cancel before uh, doing anything else. Um, so, and then there's one other thing, which is um, how to divide by fractions, if that makes sense. So that, like one over one over two, effectively what happens, you can think of this in two ways. Either if you if you are comfortable with it, you can just sort of uh, take the shortcut, which is saying, okay, something on the bottom of a fraction goes up to the top. So in other words, that just becomes two. Or if you're not that comfortable with that, then just think of it like this. Well, this is one divided by one over two. And the way to deal with division with fractions is just flip the fraction and turn it into multiplication. In other words, this is one times two. Uh, which is two. So to make that a bit, you know, a bit more realistically, how nasty it might get in the GMAT, you might have something like uh, three over eight over five over six. So if you want to sort of quickly do that, you can say, okay, this eight goes down to here and this six goes up to here, which is three times six over five times eight. And that's not a six. There we go. And then I can just say, well, that's uh, three, that's four, I've been cancelled, and so now we've got nine over two. Or, if you want to do it the other way, you can say it's three over eight divided by five over six, in other words, times, which obviously is the same thing, just 
do whichever way you feel more comfortable with. Just make sure you're able to do that. Okay, make sure you're able to rationalize and simplify square roots. What I mean by rationalize is one over root two. Well, in order to rationalize, you need to times the top and the bottom by the uh, square root on the bottom. So this would become root two over root two times root two, which is just two. That's that's called a rationalized square root. Um, and uh, a rule you do need to know if you've got something in this form, for example, you need to know how to rationalize that kind of thing, which is a slightly more um, tricky rule, which is you times by this, you times the top and the bottom by what's on the bottom, but with a slight change, you, you swap the plus to a minus if it's a plus and a, a minus to a plus if it's a minus. So you times the top and bottom by four minus root three, and then just see what ends up happening. So you get uh, 16 minus three on the bottom. And so the end answer will be four minus root three over 13. So obviously not a full guide, just make sure you know, if you, if you understand all this, just move on. If you don't, then make sure you look it up. Uh, and what I mean by simplify, if I give you root 98, um, then make sure you can spot that that's 49 times two. So in other words, seven root two, or sim equivalently, if I give you uh, root eight plus uh, two root two plus um, root, um, ooh, let's see, uh, root six, just knowing that the best you can do with this is say that, well, that root eight can be written as two root two, the second one is already fine, two root two, and the third one can't be written in terms of root two, so we have to leave it as root six. Um, and so that's going to be four root two plus root six. Uh, and that's that's probably what they want. I suppose if if it's also yet useful to know that we could, we could, I suppose if we really have to rewrite that last one in terms of root two, we could call that root three times root two, which if we were to factorize would then be four plus root three times root two, but that's less common. So make sure you know all that. Make sure you're comfortable with the idea of factorizing out common factors. Now this will do a lot more of this in algebra, but um, for arithmetic, it's relevant too in the GMAT. Five to the 10 plus five to the 11 minus five to the nine over three to the eight uh, plus three to the five. Well that's obviously ridiculously impossible to do to actually expand out so we have to factorize and so on the top we can take out five to the nine and that leaves us with a five plus five squared minus one on the top and on the bottom we can take out a three to the five and that's three to the three plus one on the bottom and that's much nicer to deal with because obviously everything in here we can actually work work with and same here so uh, just make sure you're comfortable with the idea of factorizing out common factors um, similarly, make sure you know the power laws. Um, two cubed times two to the five equals two to the three plus five, so two to the eight. Uh, two cubed over two to the five is two to the three minus five, so two to the minus two, uh, which is also equivalent to one over two to the two, which is one over four. Uh, also know that anything to the zero equals one uh, and anything to the one equals itself. So just make sure you know all the power laws. Um, and then this is actually extremely important and I'll bring this up over and over again, spot the difference of two squares factorization. Uh, in other words, it's useful to know that if I write out this a plus b, a minus b and expand it out, that leads to this expression, a squared minus b squared. Now, what's actually useful about this is this comes up over and over and over again, sort of in many different places hidden and just almost without fail, if you spot that in a question, that will be the way to do the question. So for example, in the GMAT, what they love doing is having something like this, five to the 16 minus three to the 16. Uh, and in order to sort of make progress in the question, you'd want to factorize that as a difference of two squares. So that would be five to the eight plus three to the eight times by five to the eight minus three to the eight. And then we can repeat that difference of two squares. So factorize that one into five to the four plus three to the four times five to the four minus three to the four. And then we can repeat the difference of two squares again. And so just make sure you, you know what the difference of two squares is and how to spot it. Um, and that will be 
just come up again and again. So just I'm introducing it here. Uh, and then we also want to be able to strategize for nasty multiplication. So if the GMAT asks you to do something like this, Um, yeah, something like this, working your way through one by one, uh, it's going to get very nasty. So what I like to do is sort of pick ones that are very easy to put together and sort of meet in the middle. So what I mean by that, just looking at this, well, if I put the five and the 20 together, I'm going to get a hundred. So let's get that. And then if I put the, uh, four, the three and the six together, that's not too bad. So I'll get, uh, actually, no, let's put the four and the six together. So I'll get 24. And then three and the 17 together, because that will give me 51. And why is that useful? Well, 51 is just a bit more than 50. So now I can say, well, this is 100 times 24 times 50, which will be uh, 1,200 uh, plus one more lot of 24, which is 1,224. And so now I'm, I'm done. So basically, just if you find yourself having to do some nasty multiplication, just don't go through one by one, sort of meet in the middle and put things together in a sort of nice way. And uh, finally, make sure you're aware of what the perfect squares are and the perfect cube. So one, four, nine, 27, uh, 64. Oh, wow, I'm completely getting confused. One, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, etc. Uh, and one, eight, 27, uh, 64, one, two, five, Two one six three four three um, five one two, etc. Um, because often you'll uh, I've seen examples of questions where they have, for example, uh, I know you had to do um, uh, six two five zero over um, uh, five over four to the four. Now. That looks absolutely awful, but if you know these uh, squares and cubes and to the power of four, what you'll be able to spot is that 625 is actually five to the four, which is uh, then therefore we can write this as 10 times five to the four over five to the four over four to the four, so times four to the four. And so that is now much easier because now it's just 10 times four to the four, which if you know your tables will be four, uh, 10 times 256, which will be 2,560. And so all just sort of very time-saving kind of things. Um, and just important to know, because even though it may seem obvious here, if you don't spot that, I mean, you could be here for a very long time trying to work that out. Uh, if you don't sort of, you know, know that you're not actually expected to work out incredibly nasty things. Okay, so that's sort of the very fundamentals of the GMAT. Make sure you're comfortable with everything in that. I know this isn't the most interesting video, uh, but hopefully it will get more interesting as we go on.